video, we're going to look at lookup formula errors. In the last video, we learned how to write our first VLOOKUP formula. And if you've started practicing writing lookup formulas, you've realized that they can return a lot of errors in your spreadsheet. And in this video, we're going to look at how to prevent and handle these errors. As you can see, Andy's a little worried about this, but we're going to turn that frown upside down and uh, get him smiling at the end of this video because we're going to learn how to handle these errors. So in this video, we're going to first look at the common error types. We're going to go over an overview of the common error types. And I'm going to show you this little cheat sheet you can download that you can use to uh, know what these errors are and how to handle them. And then we're going to look at some causes and solutions for the NA errors. These are the most common errors you'll see. We'll also go over some of the other error types that are less common but still good to know. And then finally, we'll go over the if error function and how to use that to handle errors as well. So we're first going to go over some of these common error types. But before I do that, I just wanted to explain what an error is. So in this example here, I have this region column that has VLOOKUP formulas in it. You can see here, I just have this VLOOKUP formula that's looking up this name in this region table over here. It's looking up the name and returning the region. So and if, when I hit enter, you can see that it's returning an error here. You'll also see this little error box appear on the left here. And if you click the drop down, it'll tell you a little more information about the error, which is value uh, not available error. So these, this is an error and lookup formulas can return uh, a lot of these different error types here within a cell for different reasons. So I have this cheat sheet here that you can basically use and uh, download to kind of understand what some of these errors are. On the left side over here, I have the different error types. And then on the right side, I have some common causes for these errors. So the NA error is the most common error you'll see with the lookup formulas. And when I say lookup formulas, I'm talking about the VLOOKUP function and also the MATCH function as well, which we'll see in the next video. But the NA error can be caused uh, for a few different reasons. One is that the lookup value does not exist. The uh, number might be stored as text and it might also have leading or trailing spaces. And we're gonna go into examples of each of these. Uh, the other common causes uh, for the ref error are that the column index number is greater than the number of columns in the lookup range. So that's uh, basically why you'll get the ref error. And we're gonna go into an example of that as well. And then some of the less common errors, the value error you might see, uh, and there's a few reasons for that. The lookup value must be less than 256 characters. That's just a limit of Excel. Uh, the column index cannot be less than one. And then you might have some type of error in the references to other workbooks in the file path itself. And then the uh, name error just happens when you accidentally misspell the function name, which can happen. So if you get that error, it's probably just because the function name like VLOOKUP or MATCH is misspelled. So we're now going to look at some common causes and solutions for the NA errors. So these are the most common errors you will see with VLOOKUP or the MATCH functions. And in this first example, we're going to look at uh, when the lookup value does not exist. So this is probably the most common error you will see. And the cause of that error is that the value does not exist. Now, in this case here, I just have this simple VLOOKUP formula. It's looking up this name in this range down here and returning column five, which is the sales value. Value. And as you can see, when I hit enter, I get an NA error. And again, the, it, the error box pops up over here. And if you uh, hit the drop down, you'll see that you get the definition of the error, which is a not available error. That's uh, what NA stands for. But it doesn't tell you what's actually causing this error. There's nothing here that tells you what's causing the error. So in this case here, uh, it's basically that the VLOOKUP cannot find this value in this list down here. Uh, it's trying to look for the name Susan Dobbert, and it doesn't exist. The name's actually right here, but it uh, contains two Bs. It's spelled differently down here uh, compared to up here. So VLOOKUP does not find the exact match. Again, we're looking at an exact match because the last argument is false. So VLOOKUP does not find an exact match. So it returns this NA error. Uh, and that's just the most common one you'll see. There's no way for the VLOOKUP to really tell you why it's, it's uh, returning this error. You could use a COUNTIF function to check if the value exists 
this in a range. So in this cell here, I have a count if function, which is basically looking in this range down here for uh, an exact match of this value. And since it doesn't find anything, it returns a zero. So instead of returning an error, it just returns a zero. If it did find the uh, name, it would return a one or however many times it finds that name in the range. So that's a good alternative. And then we'll also look at another alternative to handle these uh, when we look at the if error function. Now, another common NA error is numbers stored as text. So in this example here, I have another VLOOKUP formula, and this VLOOKUP formula is basically looking up this value in cell A6 in this range down here and trying to return the sales value. But as you can see, it's returning this NA error. And that's because my number or my lookup value is actually a number stored as text. And these values down here that I'm looking up are numbers. So, and you can tell that because Excel will actually put a little error. So you can see in the top right corner of that cell, there's a green uh, error icon. And if you click on the cell, that'll show the error box over here on the right. And if you click the drop down, you'll see this error message. It says number stored as text. So this is basically telling us that this is a number, but it's stored as text in Excel. And these values down here are numbers. They're stored as numbers. So the common rule here is that both the lookup value and the lookup range must be the same data type for the VLOOKUP to work. And in this case, they're not. We have text up here and numbers down here. So there's, uh, we can handle this a few different ways. Probably the most common or the easiest way to handle this is to convert your lookup value to a number. And you can do that in the air box right here. So if I click the drop down, there's an option to convert to number. You can just click that. That'll convert this uh, value to a number. And you can see now our formula is returning the correct result. So it's now looking, uh, looking the lookup value is a number and it's looking in a range of numbers here and then returning the correct result. Now, another common cause that you might see here, I'm just gonna scroll down. I have another example here. It's the same basic setup, but this time our lookup value is a number and our range that we're looking in are numbers stored as text. Text. So this happens a lot when you're exporting data out of some kind of ERP system or general ledger software, you'll get these numbers stored as text. And you can basically handle this the same basic way as well. You can just select all these cells in your range down here and you can convert them to numbers. So you could just click on the air box with all those selected and you can click this convert to number and that'll convert those uh, to numbers and then basically your formula will work. Now, if you don't wanna convert those to numbers, maybe you wanna leave them as text, then you can also convert this uh, lookup value to text as well. There's a few different ways to do that. I'm not going to go into all of them here. Uh, you can use the text to columns function, or you can also just add an apostrophe in front of the number there and hit enter. And that will then convert that to text. It's a number stored as text. Now you can see we're getting an error again because this is text and these are numbers down here because I converted them to numbers. So there's different ways to handle that. I won't go into all those uh, in this video, but it's just good to know how, uh, why this error occurs and how to fix it. So the last NA error type we're gonna talk about is trailing spaces. And this is another common one. So in this example here, I just have this lookup formula that's looking up this name in uh, this table down here, this range, and looking up the first column and returning the region from the second column. And you'll see that it's also returning an error, even though we have the, the proper spelling of the name this time. So we have Susan Daubert with two Bs, and that name is right down here in this cell, but it's still returning an NA error. And that's because this cell actually has some blank spaces at the end of it. So if I hit F2 on the keyboard, that'll jump me into the edit mode of the cell. And you can see that the cursor there, the text cursor is at the end of, or a few spaces out from the end of the value there. And that lets us know that there's blank spaces at the end of this name. So if I was to delete those, backs, those blank spaces, I'll just hit backspace on the keyboard and hit enter 
you could see that now my formula is returning uh, the correct result. So I'm going to quickly uh, hit Control Z to undo that so we can look at another solution, which would be to use the trim function. So another way to resolve for this is to use the trim function. And the trim function basically removes leading or trailing spaces. So it's just a function built into Excel. And I'm going to put a formula right here in this cell to show you how it works. So I'm going to type the equal sign and I'm going to type the word trim and just tab into that. And trim just only has one argument here, which is just the text that we want to trim. So in this case here, I'm going to select this cell because all of these cells have that blank space, those blank spaces at the end of them. I'm just going to select that cell, close the parentheses and hit enter. And that will basically trim off all of those blank spaces. So you can't really see them at the end of the cell anyways. But if I were to copy this formula down now, basically these values here uh, have been trimmed. So all of these cells have these blank spaces at the end and the, these cells here are trimmed and will not have those blank spaces. So now I can just change my lookup formula to basically reference this column here. So I want to look in this column. So I'm just going to drag the range over to look in column A and I want to then change my column index number to be three instead of two to return the third column and hit enter. And now you can see that it's returning the correct result because it's looking for this name in this column that does not have any blank spaces at the end. It's able to find the name Susan Dobber right here and then go over three columns to the right to return east. So again, this is a very common one. If you're exporting data out of some kind of uh, software system, it can uh, put blank spaces at the end of those cells there sometimes, and you won't know it because uh, you definitely can't see those until you actually jump into the cell and edit it and see that the text cursor is way out here to the right. So we're now going to look at some examples of some of the other errors that you'll see. Uh, these aren't as common as the NA error, but it's definitely good to know what causes them. So the first one here is a uh, ref error. So again, I have this, uh, for all these examples, I have this VLOOKUP formula that's looking up this value in this table down here and uh, re returning the region column or attempting to return the region column. So in this case here, uh, again, we're getting this ref error, and that typically happens when the column index number is outside the lookup range or the table array. So you can see here in this VLOOKUP, uh, I'm trying to return column three, but I only have two columns down here in my table array. So that's why I'm getting that error. So I'm trying to return a column or a value that's outside of the table array. So if I just change this to two, I'll just change that to two and hit enter. You can see now we're getting the correct result there. So that resolves that issue. Another one that we might see is this value error, and that can happen for a few different reasons. One common reason is that the column index is less than one. So in this example here, my column index number is zero, and the column index number needs to be one or a number greater than one, uh, but also less than the number of columns in the table array, less than or equal to the number of columns in the table array. So in this case here, it's zero. And this can happen because uh, sometimes people will use zero and one instead of true or false for the last argument. So in VLOOKUP here, we can specify true or false. We can also specify a one or a zero instead. I could put a zero here instead of false, and that would do the same thing. However, you can run into this issue sometimes where you forget to put the column index number in there, and then you have basically a zero for the column index number, and it returns the incorrect result. So as a good habit, I just like to put false in there instead of zeros and ones, and that makes it easier to read the entire formula. And and again, if we were to change this to a two and hit enter, that will resolve that error. So another common uh, value error is that the lookup value is greater than 255 characters. If this is my lookup value over here. If I hit F2, you can see that I have a lot of characters in this cell right here. It's over 255, and that's just a limitation of Excel. Uh, so that'll return a value error. And you can also use the length function or the LEN function. I have an LEN function here that it will just return the total number of characters in the cell, cell A7. So if I hit enter, you can see there's 374 characters in that cell. That's way over 255. So in that case, we get the value error. 
And then finally, the name function will occur when you misspell the function name. So in this case here, I just accidentally typed an extra O in VLOOKUP has three O's instead of two, and that's giving me that name error. So if I just uh, delete one of those O's, you can see that the screen tip comes up, everything's groovy, and I can just hit enter, and that will then resolve that error. So those are some other common errors, ref, name, and value. Might not see those as often, but it's good to know how to handle them. So we're now gonna look at how to use the if error function to handle some of these errors. So in this example here, again, I have this uh, VLOOKUP formula, it's doing the same thing. It's uh, looking up this value down here and returning column two. And I'm getting an error in this particular cell right here, an NA error. And that's because the lookup value does not exist. So the name Bob Smith does not exist in the list down here. And sometimes we'll just know that and we just want to return something other than this NA error. So we're fine with the fact that Bob Smith does not exist, but we don't want to have these NA errors cluttering up our spreadsheet. Uh, one, they look ugly and two, they can actually slow down the calculation of your uh, Excel file with, if you have a bunch of NA errors in your spreadsheet. You wanna clean these up and make sure your spreadsheet's not cluttered uh, with these errors. So one thing we can do to prevent these or to resolve them is use the if error function. So I'm just gonna jump into uh, my look or my formula here and I can basically wrap this VLOOKUP function in the if error function. So right after the equal sign here, I'm gonna start typing uh, if error, and you can see it comes up down here. I'll just tab into it. So if error, the if error function basically has two arguments, which are the value and then the value if error. So our value is gonna be our VLOOKUP function. So this will be uh, basically the value that we wanna run if the VLOOKUP returns a result that's not an error, if it returns a result, then if error will just return that result for us. If this value here, the VLOOKUP function is an error, it returns an error, then we can uh, tell the second argument what we wanna return for that error or when that error occurs. So for the value of error argument, we can just put text in here. We can put anything in here. We can reference another cell. If I just wanted to put the word error in here, I'd put it in quotes like that and then wrap the parentheses and now hit enter. And so you can see now it's telling us uh, that we have an error. And if I were to copy this formula, so I'll just hit control C and just copy it to all the cells here, control V. You can see that if the formula does return, the VLOOKUP does return a result. In this case, it does find a match. Then it will just return the value. It'll run the VLOOKUP. If it doesn't, then in this case, it's gonna show error, the word error. And if we wanted to just have it blank, uh, we could just remove the word error right here and just return double quotes like that. And that would uh, leave the cell blank. So now when I copy it down, you'll see for my errors, we just have blank cells. And if the VLOOKUP finds a match, then it returns the correct result. So if error is a great way to handle these errors and also get the errors, the error values out of the spreadsheet and uh, return some kind of other result besides the error value. I saved this uh, portion for the last part of the video because it's great to understand why these errors occur and how to fix them before you just wrap every VLOOKUP uh, formula in an if error statement. I don't advise just wrapping the VLOOKUP formula in if error all the time. It's first to best write out a VLOOKUP formula first, make sure you're not getting any errors, and then uh, understand what those errors are before you use the if error function. So that's just my two cents. It'll help you out in the long run and uh, keep your models running faster and uh, looking a lot cleaner. So I hope that video helps you understand more about the lookup formula errors in Excel. I know we covered a lot there, so don't forget to use the cheat sheet and also go back and rewatch parts of this video as you start running into some of these errors. As you can see, Andy is super excited about it. He has become the Superman of error handling in Excel. And I really think this is true that when once you start understanding the errors and how to handle them, you have a lot more power over your spreadsheet.